Welcome to the Wisconsin episode of Calling All Turkeys. Now this episode, I'm gonna do a little different. I'm gonna actually kind of narrate the story here because there's a lot of hunts going on, a lot of storylines, and otherwise I wouldn't be able to, to tell it properly by just using the typical narration I use in the field. And I actually brought a few notes with me just because there are so many details to, this, to these hunts. Um, so let's, let's just go ahead and get right into it. My first hunt was in late April, about April 27th. And I hunt a lot of public land in Wisconsin. So there are a lot of tracks of land that I could potentially go to. And so a lot of times I get, um, you know, confused in my mind as, as to which one I want to go to. You know, there's so many good spots. And so I started the day just kind of hopping around different ones and trying to get on birds. And, and because there was rain in the area, there were some, you know, some patches of rain passing through. I was kind of trying to avoid those hopping around. Well, later in the day, the rain was headed my way and it was going to set in and, and be in for the rest of the night. And so I knew I only had about 30 or 45 minutes to hunt. So I went to a track of land that Garrett Prawl and I hunted last year. We went in there and after calling for a while, finally struck up a bird and he eventually came into the call and Garrett was able to take the bird. Prior to this year, the only way you could really access this property was from the south end. The woods were so chock full of buckthorn and, and just thick cover that you really couldn't get in there easily from the north side and so you came in from the south and between two lakes there was a little waterway that you had to cross last year you know, i'm wearing my arrowheads uh, boots here they're 18 inches tall it came up to about 16 inches high up on those boots well this year i went in there and first couple steps into the water and it came over my boots and you know filled my boots full of water. Get in the shower. Ah. Ah, I'm soaking wet. <laughs> I better kill a freaking turkey. I know that. My legs are freezing now. Amazing how deep it is. Bad thing is I had to go right back to it. <sighs> so I go up in there, get set up, and I call for a while, and I can see from the my Scout Look weather app on the radar that the rain is almost there, so I figured I'd go ahead and slip on out before it started pouring down rain. But before I did that, I, I peeked over a little hedgerow into the private land. I could see through the little holes in the cover into that cornfield and I spotted two hens and a strutter. Now this strutter, we're gonna call him RG and you'll find out what that name means later. Well, we know there's a turkey right here. There's two hens and that strutter. Tomorrow morning I might be set up right here. It's a big good little spot right here to ambush him. Right here in this corner. I came in here yesterday with about 20 minutes to spare before the rains came. Just did some calling, trying to get a bird to gobble, see what was out here. To my surprise, they'd done a control burn earlier this month. They burned this whole field that was overgrown. They thinned out some of the woods, burned dead a little bit, and then burned to the other side near the lake. And so there's fresh green grass growing everywhere, and the birds are loving it. Spotted a gobbler right across the property line on the private land. I could see through the hedgerow, gobbling two hens. This morning came here. At least two gobblers. <laughs> two gobblers roosted down there. I was gonna say there was one across the road, but it sounds like he just got shot. A little work listen down here. <clears throat> Hopefully we can bring him in and we can hear a boom as well. Two 
Yeah, it sucks. Judging by the radar, we've got about, I don't know, probably two hours before this rain passes. Today's probably my last day that I'll get to hunt for at least maybe three or four days. And it really sucks because we had birds in there this morning. Three, maybe four gobblers in there. Uh, one lightly got shot across the road. There's some public over there and some private mixed together. Uh, sound like he was on the private from the direction and you know, distance. They sound like he was gobbling from. But I know there's at least two other longbeards in there, so I'm strutting with the hens. One seems to be a subordinate. The other gobbler kind of chased him off when he finally entered the field. So he might be the one I can get in. Sometime in the afternoon, I decided, you know, I could either sit in the truck all day, go home, or go sit in the rain and, and try to kill this gobbler, RG. Well, I decided to do the, the latter, and I decided to go sit out in the rain no matter what. You know, it's going to be wet and cold, but, you know, like I said, I could go dry off and uh, get warm later. All right, this is where that turkey was strutting this morning. And why he appeared to disappear, he went right down that hill, right up to the side, and then I lost sight of him. So I'm gonna get, I'm gonna put my decoy right here on top of this hill, right here so everybody can see it. And I'm gonna sit right over in those bushes. I got out here at five this morning, hunting until, I don't know, eight. Then basically sat in the truck for eight hours today. Got out once when there was a break in the rain, but then it started raining, so I had to get back in the truck. And so at four o'clock this afternoon, I had to ride the, on the roads, checking the fields and stuff. And I finally said, you know what? I'm gonna go out there and sit in the rain, kill me a turkey. I don't care how wet or cold I get. Well, I'm wet, yeah, I'm cold. And I just missed a bird. But I'm not mad. I'm a little disappointed. Stuff like that happens. So I'll go home. I'll work the next few days. And I'll be back out here Monday. And I'll settle the score. Plain and simple. Now I'm hunting a, a piece of pole land that requires non-toxic shot well i didn't have any non-toxic shot left for my 12 gauge the feral heavyweights but i did have some for my 20 gauge so i brought my 20 gauge along well i've been using my 12 gauge for the last few weeks and so i was used to having it with me and when the moment of truth came i totally forgot i was shooting a 20 gauge you know it's a dumb move on my part you know, i should have been more conscious of what i was doing but thinking I had my 12, I figured the bird was in range and, and it didn't look like he was gonna come any closer, so I decided to take a shot. Well, as you can see, I cleanly missed this bird and I actually watched him rejoin the hens as they went down, down the hillside and up the field and they went to roost at the other end of the field. This is where RG got his name because I missed him and I was a little, I wasn't mad at him I guess I was mad at myself for making a boneheaded move and not realizing what gun I had with me and and its range I would have never taken that shot had I been thinking clearly and knew that I had my 20 with me 
luckily the bird wasn't hurt and I would get to hunt him again. So we started calling him the Redemption Gobbler because I wanted to get redemption not at him but re redeem myself for making a stupid move by you know forgetting that I had a 20 gauge with me. I hunted him a few times and but he was always one step ahead of me. He was you know either on, roosting on one side of the field when I got in in the morning you know I'd go set up on that side the next time and he'd be roosting on the other end. He'd come out he'd see my decoys he would you know kind of strut to him and he would just skirt me and so I decided to kind of abandon him temporarily I guess for a lack of a better term I had Joe Slayton coming in town and Joe Slayton he's my buddy from Linden California he's also the 2015 Grand National Gobbling Division champion he was headed into town to hunt Minnesota and Wisconsin trying to get a bird in each state well the day before he arrived I kind of sent uh, talked to to Joe and I told him I said we got a gobbler across the road that we're gonna hunt I said so I'm gonna go across the you know the other side of the road and, and hunt over there I was basically saving RG for Joe and I was gonna go after an easier bird so yesterday I hunted across the road and that bird gave me a slip but I heard this one over here gobbling this yesterday morning so I decided to come over here figuring he might be a little easier because it's just this one field in the back turns out there's two of them there are some hens, so I got some competition, but I believe I got a chance, though, because I figure they'll come out here. It's a low spot. You can't see it from the road. Turkeys like to hang out in little low spots in fields where they can't be seen by the road. And uh, so far, I like what I'm hearing. I wonder if I gobble at these turkeys, will it bring them closer? I guess it's worth a shot. <laughs> this is uh, my lucky bird. Not so much lucky for him, but lucky for me. Um, came in here yesterday and hunted across the road. It's public land. And that bird was being hard-headed and wouldn't, wouldn't work for me. But I heard one over here gobbling, so I said this morning I'm going to come over here and work this bird. And it took some doing, a lot of calling. Had a Jake come in and a hen come in. And he was still over there gobbling, so I threw some gobbles at him, and I don't know if that is what finally broke him, but it wasn't long, and he come into the field, and it gave me a shot. Joe Slayton and myself, we just got to a piece of public land. We're gonna creep up to this field that I see gobblers in with hens sometimes. We're gonna tuck into the shade on this side and just sit it out the rest of the afternoon, and then Come up with a plan tomorrow morning if we don't get a bird this afternoon. So come with us. It's going to be a long, boring set. As we entered the field, Joe spotted RG. He was in a low spot. He came out of the low spot. He saw us and he took off running to the other end of the field and went into the woods. But Joe and I decided to go ahead and sit down and hunt. I've done this in the past. I've 
had purposely spooked birds out of the field if they're far enough away let them see me let them ease off in the woods and then go set up down there near where they went in the woods and wait 30 or 45 minutes and then start calling and bring these birds back out so joe and i decided to do that but we didn't want to go so far you know down the field and close to them we decided just to set up on one end of the field and kind of observe things and get in a high spot so we could see things well 30 minutes later rg comes back out in the field Old gobbler gave us the slip. Last time I saw him, he was coming straight at us, kind of off to the left a little bit. He went into a low spot in the field and lost sight of him, so we just got ready. And we waited here for 20 plus minutes, 30 minutes. Never, never showed up, so I just stood up and glassed the field and there's nothing out there. He's either gonna roost, well, he's probably gonna roost here. There's no trees really suitable on that private land. So, he ain't gonna roost down there. No. So he'll roost. Somewhere in this vicinity, I believe. There's, like I said, on that, if you cross that fence, there's a little group of trees, but they're all scrub. They're no, there's nothing like this. So, RG did it to us again. This bird is becoming a thorn in our sides, I guess. Well, Joe knows the story. You know, I told him, you know, why he was there about the miss and all my run-ins with RG. And now Joe's experienced RG firsthand. But we're gonna give him another, you know, another go. RG roosts in the woods before we leave. We know where he's at, so we decided to come in the next morning and give him one more shot, you know, one more chance. Joe's gonna try and get this bird. Next morning we get set up RG is in the woods goblin. He pitches down in the woods. He enters the field, but he goes away from us to the other end of the field and starts strutting. Eventually, he starts working our way, but he gets to the point where he came out into the field, and that's where he goes right back into the woods, and he gobbles in the woods, going right by us, and then eventually beyond us, headed towards the private land. So at this point, Joe's like, forget this bird. Let's go somewhere else. You know, he's, Joe's kind of decided like me to, this bird is, we're spending way too much time on this bird, in other words. Well, Joe and I head south, and we're, we're trying to hunt a few spots and other, other public tracks. But again, the rains come. And so we've got you know, a hunt planned with Randy Dumay out in uh, eastern Wisconsin, out near Sheboygan. And so we decided, you know, since it's raining, let's go ahead and make the five-hour drive over there, and hopefully we can find some birds that are you know, a little, a little easier to work to the call. We go in there the next morning and they're gobbling pretty good, but they're all on the neighbor's property pretty far off and that's where they stay. So we decided to abandon that hunt and head off to some public land. Now we were walking on this public land, we were walking and calling, walking and calling, and finally we strike a bird. I don't think he's that far. Let's get him to gobble one more time. There's a big field. It's right over the hill. There's a big field right there. So let's go.
this is a really nice bird and unfortunately the bird you know never came any closer than about 70 yards and we had to just you know let him slip off and we actually tried to circle on him and uh, get repositioned but uh, we never heard him again so um, we we walked around most of the day trying to find other birds we did get another one to gobble and he gobbled a few times for our calls but he never came in but that evening we roosted a bird and he was gobbling pretty good on the roost so we decided to come back in the next morning and give that guy a go next morning birds gobbling good but then we hear some hens fire up and uh, he pitches down to you know to them and or they pitch down to him but they sit right over there's a little drop off in front of us we're on a snowmobile trail in the public land and there's a drop off and they're right below that and he's just gobbling every once in a while just enough to let us know he's there and basically make us stay where we're at and so we spend most of the morning sitting there eventually we get tired of putting up with this bird and we decided that we've had enough he eventually quits gobbling so we decided to get out of there we went back out here where we called a hen in yesterday and then saw a gobbler as we left from the road he was headed kind of in this direction. So we came back out here. It's about, I don't know, 10, 30 maybe, 11 o'clock. 11, 30. Wow. Days flying by. So a midday hunt right here. We'll sit here for a couple hours. Hopefully we can pull one in. And Joe and I can go home. Did you hear it the first time? I heard it two times. And that wasn't for sure the first time I heard it. He looked at him and he said, was that a gobble? I said, was that? Then I called again and he gobbled back. We both said, yeah, that's it. Joe's finally got his first Wisconsin gobbler. You know, he wasn't able to get one in Minnesota, but he was, he was happy. He just wanted to get a bird while he was here. So now we're pumped, and so now the pressure's off. And usually when you get the pressure off like that, things start going a little better for you. So Joe's got a tag for Zone 1, which is in the western side of the state. I know a piece of public land. It takes a little while, a lot of work to get back in there. You've got to walk about three or four miles to get to where the birds are at but you avoid hunters and uh, the turkey hunting can be pretty good sometimes convincing Joe to do this is another story though he doesn't want to make that three or four mile walk actually I don't want to make that three or four mile walk but I know that there's a good chance we can get on a bird if we do so after the four or five hour drive back across the state I convinced Joe let's give it a shot welcome again to Wisconsin Joe Slayton got a bird yesterday. Now we shot across the state to western Wisconsin. Huge track of public land, swamp bottoms, some ridges on the other side of the river. We've heard several birds gobbling already. We can only hunt this side of the river though. So we're hoping to get in position. We got one kind of north of us. I'm not sure which side of the river he's on, but we're gonna give it a go. We're a few miles back in here. We're just going to walk around, try to locate a bird, hopefully bring him on in for Joe to get another bird here in Wisconsin. We got a long shot here, a very long shot. 
put a bird gobbling across the river. And we're probably 100 yards from the river, but we're gonna go to the river's edge and call to him. He's responding every time we call. Make him sound like there's two hens over here. Make him think that. And uh, keep our fingers crossed. They fly across this river often, so it wouldn't be you know, unheard of for them just to glide across. Let's we'll sit right here and watch and listen for a little bit. That's an island in front of us. The main body of the river is on the other side of the island. He may be on that island. Slow Pope Joe comes on. Joe. And he stumbled Joe. He might be on the island. So I figured. But that's not him, is it? He's in the woods. You're gonna have to stand here behind this tree and shoot him as he pitches across. I wait till he lands. Get right over here, Joe. Right here. I hate situations like this, though. I mean, even if you can give him a pitch across, how you gonna shoot him in this mess? He can't even stick his head above these ferns. <laughs> Holy smokes, he's coming. <laughs> he's coming out to the right. He's gonna come out to, he's gonna come out right out there to that hill. It's the same point. Sounds like he's farther to the left now. It does sound like he's to the left. Maybe he's trying to find his way through there. Yeah, exactly. Right there on that bank. And he walked 
right by us. Should have came up right then and shot him. When he saw he flew, I should have stood. Do you believe that? Caught that bird right across the river. He passed. He passed by us at 15 yards or less. But we couldn't see him with the ferns. What we're gonna do is be real quiet. Let him fade away. Get in position to call him back. Because we're just gonna bust him if we try to do it right here. There will be 100 yards or so from him. He's right over there. Yeah, we're gonna come around. Yeah, we can get right across. That water doesn't go far, it's just a pond. <laughs> yeah. Even though we messed it up right off the bat. Hey, that's all right. That's sweet. Yeah. Oh my gosh. This was a touchdown. <laughs> what is that? How in the world is that back here? Yeah, I got to do my spike. <laughs> <laughs> two birds, two days. How about that for Joe? The luck has really changed for us. And, uh, Kind of got bad luck there for just a second. We came in here and we weren't hearing any birds, but I knew that the farther we got in here, sometimes we'd hear them. And we hunted on the other side of the river a few days ago and they were all gobbling on this side. Got in here and they're all gobbling on that side. I told Joe, I said, don't worry. You know, I was worried actually, but <laughs> I told him not to worry. We might be able to get one across here. I was kind of doubtful one would actually fly the river. I figured more than likely they would pitch down from the from the ridges over there and glide down. This one was actually on the island level with us and he flew across and landed 15 yards or less from us but Joe just couldn't see him because of all the tall ferns and he slipped right through our clutches. But a quick little circle, some arguing about where to go. 
I set Joe straight and put him in the right spot. <laughs> so success again. Joe's got his second Wisconsin bird, um, and we head back to the Twin Cities, back to my home. I finally managed to get a chance to go back out, but I don't want to go after RG. I want to go down to where Joe and I hunted, but I want to hunt across the river because we heard lots of goblin over there. Well, I get down there and I have one bird that I'm set up on. He's goblin, but he's got hens. They pitch down, they gobble all morning, have a few deer come in, but then the goblin subsides, the deer wander off. You know, that's pretty much the end of my hunt. That's how it went. So I decided to head back north, um, hunted a few other places, and at, I guess it was around four o'clock in the afternoon, I decided, you know what, I'm going over there and I'm gonna hunt the last couple hours of daylight. I'm gonna hunt RG. At the very least, try roost him for tomorrow morning's hunt. I'm back at the spot that I missed that bird a few weeks ago. I'm, I've been calling it my Wisconsin Redemption Gobbler because hopefully I can redeem myself on him. I'm just coming up to the field now that I've seen him in, the one I actually missed him out of. He's been hanging out on the private land a couple hundred yards that way and then kind of coming this way in the evening. So I'm gonna just make sure he's not in the field then swing around and set up over here in this kind of open timber where they thinned it out a little bit and get set up there and minimal calling. I don't see him at first, but it's not. Minimal calling and hopefully just, hopefully it just works to the decoys. I'm just putting two hens out because he's been hanging around with two hens and if he's not with them today, then hopefully the two hen decoys will draw them on in. We'll see how it goes. So just getting settled in. This is like a little, you know, a little gap through the woods. And he should be able to see the decoys from either side. I got the hens up on the little knoll there. Not gonna call much at all. Maybe do a few soft yelps here in a little bit. And maybe a soft yelp every 30 minutes. But hopefully he'll come through either side and seal the decoys and head this way. Hopefully he comes from this way because I'm kind of set up for that. But if he comes from this way, I, I can get a shot off of this little gap here. And I hope I see him through the brush here. I can see little bits and pieces of the opening here. And I'm hoping I can see him before he gets here and I can get in position. Otherwise, I'll just let him strut on by and get to the decoys. Turkey just gobbled. Back over that way. It's not that far away. I'm barely yelping. What the heck is me? Yes, got him, redemption. <laughs> I think that was the trick. Get away from the field, get over here. He was over that way in the private land and he come over here. Whew. Nice. Yes, I am so pumped right now. That bird has given me fits. It's the one I missed a few weeks ago. Oh man, that's exciting. What a fun hunt. 
wasn't even expecting to kill this bird this evening. I figured I'd just slip in here. Um, I might get lucky at the very least. I'd be able to roost him. This bird is the same one I missed uh, a couple weeks ago. Set in the rain for three hours. And uh, I missed him about 40, 45 yards. And that was just a mental mistake on my part. Luckily, um, the shot missed him cleanly. And uh, watched him walk off with his hens that evening and I've uh, been chasing him ever since and we've had some close calls I've hunted him a couple times um, Joe Slayton and I who was with me last week we actually hunted him once and uh, actually had him in gun range but he was just below a little knoll and we couldn't get a shot on him and uh, that's just the way it's been for the past couple weeks but I came in here this morning or this evening rather looking to maybe get lucky or at least roost the bird and I figured I'd stay away from the field I know from Hearing him gobble in the evening, he tends to be over on this side of the property on the private land in the cut cornfield. And I was hoping he was there this evening. So I did a little loop through the field, made sure he wasn't in the field, came over here and set up. And I felt if I got over here, not only would I be closer to him, but maybe he'd be, you know, feel more comfortable com coming to the call in this area instead of that big field. You know, kind of like the woods. When I, I like hunting the woods sometimes because birds are usually a little more comfortable in the woods and they come to the call a little easier than a big a wide open field and so it worked out when he first gobbled he was way off it sounded like and then he started getting closer and I think it was just this hill drops off real sharp and he came right up this little trail and uh, I'm not sure if he spotted me the hands are kind of hard to see over there but I don't know if he spotted me up in the brush and uh, took the first opportunity to shoot him and luckily he went down and a little redemption for me Beautiful Wisconsin bird, public land at that. I always love the public land birds.